Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to Martinis with Scott. Episode episode 183. We're also live on Instagram. The Martinis with Scott is being recorded. The Instagram is live. If you are on Instagram, want to throw out any comments, uh, questions, things you want me to talk about, please feel free to do so. I have a new setup today. I have a new setup today because we have a new podcast coming. Hopefully uh, the volume is got, uh, good. I've got the uh, Roadcaster Pro. I think that's what it's called, the Roadcaster Pro setup. So hopefully my audio is way better uh, than it used to be. And in 2022, I am pleased. Cheers, by the way. I am good to see you. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining everyone on Instagram. We're shooting a uh, Martinez with Scott episode here, which is a uh, YouTube show that you can check out anytime. And we will be talking about um, New Year's uh, business goals, uh, objectives, ways to go about planning. And if you want to jump in on that conversation, uh, please do so. So 2022, I'll be launching a new podcast called the Winning Momentum Podcast uh, with Scott Sinclair or something to that effect, to that effect. And um, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's going to be on the same places. You won't have to resubscribe on YouTube. Uh, you won't have to resubscribe on uh, any of the platforms that you may listen uh, to the Martinis with Scott show. But we're going to drop the Martinis with Scott uh, probably in a couple of weeks. Here, uh, we're going to go do an interview style. I hope that the I hope that the audio is much better with my new setup, which I am testing today, and so I'm excited about it. Did you have a good holiday? Yeah, I, I had a great holiday. Uh, it's cold. It's really cold where I am. I was in uh, I was in Miami for a conference. It was my first time leaving Canada in like two years because of COVID. Went to Miami for a conference, which was great. I put up some content on the YouTube channel uh, of my uh, of my panel participation from Miami and then uh, came back to where I live and it's been minus 30, minus 35 for weeks now. It's been horrible. We had over four feet of snow uh, heading into Christmas day. I spent seven hours plowing. So that was my holiday, but that's why I live in a ski town. Let's get at it. During the holidays, I like to spend some time just to, just to reflect just to think about what are my goals for 2022, uh, for the next year? Um, what are my business goals? What are my personal goals? What are my plans? And I try to come up with my short list of not too many things. And that's what I was able to do. And I've come up, uh, I've come up with my list, but I thought that we could talk today about how you set your business goals as an owner manager, as an entrepreneur, as a, as a business executive. Um, did you do your planning? Did you do those? Have you set your resolutions? You know, the um, uh, studies show, studies show that New Year's resolutions, are, they all fall apart by about March. So you tend to forget about them in February and by March, it's all over. You haven't kept up with your exercise, you haven't kept up, kept up with your diet, you're not doing the business goals, you're not following those targets, because life takes over. Because a, a goal, a resolution doesn't change the system, it doesn't change the habits and the routines that uh, you have developed uh, in your business and in your life. And so the outcome isn't any different, you're doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome you haven't changed uh, the habits that we talk about all the time on this show and in business, the routines and policies that we talk about all the time on this show. So how are some, uh, what are, what are some ways to think about your annual planning for your business? Let's try to focus mostly on business today. What are the ways that you can think about or, or go about setting objectives, setting goals and having a better chance of absolutely attaining, actually attaining those, convincing the people that you work with to uh, to work towards those goals. Um, is there a better system than what you're doing now, than what everybody is doing now? What happens in a typical company? What happens in a typical company 
Uh, thanks for those that joined uh, live on Instagram. We are shooting. Uh, I've just have you jumping in. We're shooting a Martini's with Scott episode, which will be on YouTube at 4 p.m. Eastern today. I'm testing on a new system, and we're talking about uh, corporate planning goals and objectives. If you want anything to throw in on the Instagram chat, please do so. Please do so. Thanks for thanks for jumping in. The what typical companies do. Uh, and again, mid-market and smaller companies, owner-manager companies, entrepreneurial companies, is they think, well, we need to do some strategic planning, right? And so at the, at the you know, in November, December, and sometimes they miss year-end and head into January, they do a little corporate retreat for a day or sometimes for an afternoon or two days, whatever it is. And they go through a process with their key employees and management team. And they write out a document. They say, well, here's the things. Like they go through every product line. They go through the market, who their customers are. They go through their financial statements and everything. The HR policies, uh, supply chain. And they go through everything. And they come up with a whole new plan for the next fiscal year. And they write it down. And they allocate it out to people who's responsible for that within the management team. And then just like a New Year's resolution, just about like, you know, exercising or losing weight, by February, March, They've just forgotten about it because they haven't really changed any of the routines, any of the systems. They've put goals over systems rather than systems over goals. So let's talk about some ways that we could plan uh, smarter and that we can plan better. And speaking of smart, there are uh, SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T goals, which is an acronym. That's why I'm spelling it out for you. SMART goals that are a well-established management tool uh, originally created by Peter Drucker, who I believe that to be true. I don't know it for a fact. Correct me on Instagram if you think uh, I'm wrong. But it was uh, created by Peter Drucker in the uh, management consultant in the 1980s. A uh, very famous management consultant, if you're old enough to remember him. And he came up with SMART goals. And this is a way of setting goals uh, within, a, within a management team, within a corporation, within a business that give you a better shot of achieving, of sticking to, and getting some results out of those goals. So SMART, S-M-A-R-T. The S is specific, specific, okay? So the goal must be specific in nature. A goal must be clear, it must be specific. And so, for example, let's lose, uh, let's talk about um, losing weight, okay? So your New Year's resolution is you wanna lose uh, 10 pounds, well, that is not, you want to lose some weight. That's not a specific goal. The specific goal has quantifi- uh, quantifies, so it's got quantification, and it's got a time limit, So, and it has a system. Okay, so I'm going to lose uh, 10 pounds uh, by June 30th, and I'm going to do that by exercising every day and stop eating the following specific foods. So there would be an example of a goal that is clear and is very, very specific, okay, with timelines, which by the way, in the SMART acronym, the last one T is time bound. All right, so in a corporate setting, let's say you want to improve your margin. I always tell you to make more money in business, start by thinking about your margin, specifically your contribution margin. And here's how, uh, here's how a goal might be set on that. A typical company might say, well, One of our goals is to increase margin. A smart goal, a specific goal would be, I want to uh, increase my contribution margin or my direct materials more specifically. I want to lower my direct materials as a percentage of revenue by 5% by March 31. There's a specific goal um, that, that is easily measured and is very clear. So my direct materials as a percentage of revenue I want to bring that down by 5%, okay, uh, by March 31. There's an example of how to set a specific goal in the SMART system of uh, setting goals. Hi again on Instagram. If you're watching live, you want to throw in some comments, please do so. What we're doing doing today is shooting a Martinis with Scott uh, episode for the YouTube channel that will be released released at 4 p.m. Eastern, but I just thought I'd bring you in live if you wanted to listen and participate in the conversation. So SMART goals, uh, number one specific, the M stands for measurable. A goal must be measurable, as I talked about with the direct materials as a percentage of revenue, very measurable. 
right? Your financial statements spit out what your direct material expense is. And, um, and uh, you know what your revenue is, and you can do that calculation. It's a measurable goal. You can track it. You know mathematically the ways that you can, you can go about achieving those goals, uh, that particular goal, and so it's measurable. The goal must be measurable. If you are not measuring, you are not managing. SMART goals, S-M-A, the A is achievable. A goal must be realistic and attainable. So you sit down with your management team and uh, you sit down with your sales team. Here's an example. You sit down with your sales team and you say, okay, well, we did, we did, let's make up a number. We did a million dollars in revenue last year. Now I want you to do 1.5 million in revenue. And your sales team says that's completely unachievable. Um, we don't like our targets. They push back. You push back on them. And you end up with a sales target of $1.5 million or 500%, uh, 500% uh, growth. So what does the sales team do in the next fiscal year with that target? Well, they ignore it. They just ignore it. They think, why even try? We're just going to go about our business and, and uh, do the thing, same things we've always done. We don't think this is achievable. And there's no effort put, in, put into achieving that goal. That's what happens, right, with unachievable goals. And so part of the SMART system put forward by, by Peter Drucker and as a common managerial to, tool, Part of the way to set a SMART goal is to make sure that it's achievable. So we've got specific, measurable, and achievable. The goal must be relevant. Okay, well, what does that mean? The goal must be relevant to the business, but it also must be relevant to the individual that you expect to, to obtain that goal, right? To actually go out and do the work um, and to wake up in the morning and care about achieving that goal. And the best way to make that relevant, there's there's two pieces of advice that I can give you here. Is number one is don't have too many goals for the year. You don't end up, you know, these planning sessions that corporations and businesses go through, they end up with a with a laundry list of uh, 20, 30 things that they want to accomplish in the next fiscal year. And it's just too much. If, if you have more than say three, three to five, I think three is optimal, five is too many, but you might be able to get away with it. Um, three to five key objectives, uh, major changes for the next fiscal year, major goals for the next fiscal year. And then the second point is align your compensation, your bonus structure to go along with that, okay? Um, you need to motivate people um, through compensation to make that goal relevant to them. Okay, SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant. Um, and the last one we talked about actually at the beginning, the T in SMART is uh, time-bound a goal must have an achievable deadline. All right. So that is the common managerial consultant thinking um, corporate America way of thinking about goals. Smart goals, uh, they're specific, they're measurable, they're achievable, they're relevant, and they're time bound. And so um, it's funny, you know, I was listening to a, a Grant Cardone uh, video on Instagram, I think the other day, and uh, which I don't do often, but I was just listening to it as I was traveling around. And he was saying, you know, I've never had a, I've never had an achievable goal in my life. I've never had a timeline attached to my goals in my life. I want, he, I think he said as a reference, I want to, I want to connect with 8 billion people in the world. He says, I don't even know if that's possible. I don't know if it's possible, and I don't know if it's possible in my lifetime. Maybe that'll take 200 years to do that as my content continues on after I'm dead. That's a different way to think about a goal, and it's certainly not a smart goal, is it? It is certainly not a smart goal, but it's exactly the way I like to think about things. Look at, by the way, on Instagram Live, uh, we are currently shooting a Martinis with Scott episode for YouTube. Thank you for joining. If you want to, we're talking about corporate goals, how to set them. It applies to your everyday life as well, not just in your business. And if you want to jump into the conversation or just say hello, please feel free to do so. But really what we're doing today is just you're watching me. Uh, if, you're, if you're on Instagram Live, you are watching me uh, do my recording 
of the Martinis with Scott show on YouTube. So the business, if you're, if you're running a business and you're seeking, inc seeking incremental improvement, we want our revenue to go up 5%, 10% uh, this year. We want to get a little bit more profit. We want to bring in one more customer. If you're looking for a budgeting type of improvement to your business, SMART goals are really the way to go. Okay. Um, SMART goals uh, are what you ought to be doing, making them specific and measurable and achievable and relevant and time bound is what you ought to be doing for setting those goals. And remember, the relevant part is don't have too many goals, have just a handful, I say three to five on the outside and adjust your compensation system accordingly. However, however, if you're in my business, if you're dealing with very high growth uh, companies, uh, if you're dealing with turnaround companies, companies that have been in trouble and I'm working to turn them around, which is, which is what I've been doing for, for 30 years, um, if you're in my business, then you're dealing with, with rapid change within an organization. And if you're dealing, if you want, if you want fast, massive, uh, I don't know if massive is the right word, but if you want fast, significant change within your organization, I think SMART goals are counterproductive. They're absolutely counterproductive. And instead, uh, I would like you to consider my DARE, D-A-R-E, approach to planning and affecting change. Now, I came up with this acronym, acronym yesterday, the D-A-R-E. Maybe I'll amend that over time. But the process I've been using for a long, long time. So let me talk to you about what the DARE system is for you to think about. D, dream. Dream. Dream about what your business could look like in three to five years, I don't care about the time frame. Where do you want this business to go? You might be doing a million dollars in revenue in your business today. Uh, what would your business look like if it was doing $50 million in revenue, right? There's a dream. What would be different? What is that big, shiny direction, that big, shiny bobble over here that we're trying to get to? Um, and you know, what our dreams are as a business, as an organization. Make a list of the strategic changes that would have to happen in your business to actually get from here to there. Don't worry about time frame. Don't worry about practicality. What does it look like? What does your business look like in your dreams three to five years if you are just an outstanding success, okay? Once you've made that list, adjust. So we're in DARE here, D-A-R-E. Adjust the current systems, habits, and routines within your organization, within your business, to work towards those strategic changes. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of this after, uh, after I walk through what the acronym means. So you're going to dream, and part of that is, what does my business look like three to five years? What do I need to, what would be so different about my business uh, from what it is today to what it needs to be? And then start working on adjusting your routines and systems within the organization to accomplish that. The R and DARE would be reward. We talked about this before in the relevant side of SMART goals. In the reward, start rewarding your employees for participating, for to participating in those new systems. And do not, so that's the positive, there's the carrot. And do not punish them uh, for missing goals, okay? So what you don't want to do is create these grand, unreasonable targets that you may never get to, like the Grant Cardone, I want to influence 8 billion people. Don't make it a failure if you only influence 7 billion people. It's not a failure. It's not a hard goal. There's no timeline attached to it. It's a direction. It's a direction, and that's really, really important. So you don't punish people for missing it. You reward them for participating. And then the last one, uh, E, is evolve, uh, which means just, just monitor this regularly and adjust your systems, routines, and, and habits uh, to keep driving towards that outcome without worrying. And when I say the outcome, I don't mean the hard goal. I mean, just keep driving in that direction as best you can. Try different things. And by different things, it always boils down. What I mean is it always boils down to systems, habits, routines. How does an organization function? How does it respond 
to a stimulus, to a trigger. Okay, so the DARE approach, as opposed to setting hard goals for the year, which I almost never do because I'm looking to affect big change in my organizations because I'm in the turnaround and high growth business. I'm not in the stability business. Um, yeah, the DARE is dream, adjust your current systems, reward, uh, and evolve. So let me give you an example. Uh, but first, hi, uh, everybody live on Instagram. Thank you for joining. And what we're doing today is I am shooting my Martinis with Scott show that will be released on YouTube at 4 p.m. Eastern. I am testing out a new podcast system today to see if the audio is better than normal. And uh, I just thought I'd throw on the Instagram live to invite you on. And if you want to say hello or have any comments or want me to talk about something different, please feel free to, to jump in. So let's consider an example of my DARE approach uh, from one of my businesses. And when I went to management and I said to them, hey, why don't we, let's go through a planning session uh, in November, December, whenever that was done. And, you know, the management team came to me, as they do in most businesses, and they said, well, here's what we think our revenue can grow. Let's say it's 20%. Um, uh, and, and for me, that, that it was a very reasonable, it was a smart goal. It was specific. There was a plan that went along with it, which involved an increased marketing budget, bringing on some new customers that were, um, already showing interest in the product. Uh, it was, it was achievable. Uh, there was a timeline associated with it. And so it all made sense. It was a smart goal, but to me, it's not a satisfactory goal because, I mean, it's great. It's great to go 20%, but the business is a small business, a really small business, and we need more rapid growth than that, more high growth. And that, you know, in the context of this company is not high growth. We're not going to, in my view, survive as a business if we just continue to bump along, you know, at the size that this business is. And so I want high growth. So I challenged the management team. And I said to them, hey, what would happen? What would happen if three, five, what, not what would happen, what would it look like if I said to you, we need to be a, a, a much larger business with say, not 25% growth, but a 25 multiple growth, okay? So if you were say doing 1 million in revenue, 25 million in revenue, okay? I'm not saying that's the numbers of this business, but if you were doing a million dollar business, your business look like if you were 25 million or 50 million and it became a fun energizing type discussion and some of the tangibles that we got out of that was um was we would need a new product all right our current product line um, is not sufficient it caps out it's not sufficient to generate that amount of revenue we learned uh, and decided that we need to enter new markets. We need specifically to head more into uh, certain geographical areas within the United States uh, to get to that. And we decided that our supply chain couldn't handle that and we need to change some of our supply chain to make that work. And so for me as a leader of this organization, I've got now strategic goals that I can start working on and setting up systems. Okay, so that was the dream part of this. Um, what would we look like three to five years? What is an audacious goal, uh, target, direction? What would we look like and what would need to change? New product, new markets, uh, revised supply chain. Now I can start changing the systems and the routines within the, within the organization to head in that direction. And I can start rewarding uh, the employees uh, for participating for participating in that, not, not punishing them for missing goals, not saying this is something achievable, but to get them moving and motivated to participate in heading in that direction. So there's, there's an example. And, you know, in that particular example, it's way too early in that business to tell whether this is going to work or not. But I'll tell you this, in turnaround business, when I'm dealing with troubled companies, I've been doing this for a long time, for 30 years, and I have never been disappointed with that approach. I'll give you an example. I was working on the turnaround of a company a few years ago. 
that uh, I won't give you the industry um, or too many specifics, but it was a good mid-size uh, manufacturing company. And at the end of the day, it made a bunch of products and it sold them to big box retailers, okay? And in that business, you have a scorecard with your retailer, with your customer, because they're going to put your product on the shelf and they're going to sell to the retail market. And they give you a scorecard to say whether you're a good supplier or not. And a big part of that supplier, that, that, that scorecard, uh, the rating of you as a supplier, um, there would be the obvious things like uh, turnover. In other words, when, you know, do people buy your product quickly, the margin that the retailer gets out of that. But another big thing is fill rate. So when they make an order, a fill rate is if, if the, if the uh, retailer orders 100 of your units and your policy is to ship those, those units in two weeks, well, how many, how many units did you ship them in two weeks? Did you ship them 100 units in two weeks? And if you did, that's 100% fill rate. And if you ship them 90 units in two weeks, that's a 90% fill rate. And, you know, it changes from industry to industry as to what is acceptable but if you're not hitting 95 as a bare minimum, 98, 99% fill rates is a way better number, then you're a, you're a shitty supplier. If you're not hitting those numbers, you're a shitty supplier. Hey, on uh, Instagram Live, we're shooting a, a Martinis with Scott uh, recorded episode here, which will be released on YouTube at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just thought we'd invite you in. Thank you for joining. And if you want to bring in some comments, please feel free to do so. And so this company, when I met them, were a troubled business. That's why they hired me. That's why I stepped in. And their fill rates were around 32%, I think I calculated. And, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to work through the data on fill rates um, in reality because, because you get into these debates about, well, I shipped three quarters of the order, you know, on time, but then I shipped the rest of the order you know, a week after it was supposed to be due. So I should get some credit for that, my fill rates. Anyways, you got to come up with the math. You got to come up with the math that you and your management team can agree on. And then, and then you'd calculate where you're at and where you need to be. And I just told you where you need to be. You need to be, you need to be 95, 98%. And, and this company was by my math, 32%. Okay. So we agree on the calculation. This company was at 32%. Now, if I go to the management team, including the president, including the chief operating officer, including the the plant manager and the the CFO, and I say to them, you're at 32%, what is your fill rate going to be next year? What do you think they say? Do you think they say 98% or some acceptable number? Do you think they say 75%? You know, we got a long way there. Um, No. What they say is a smart goal that we talked about earlier on this episode, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. They say, we think we can get from 32% to, say, 50% um, in this next fiscal year. That's the plan. Which, to me, says the plan is to fail because a 50% fill rate is a failure. Okay? So dreaming dreaming, the dare approach, dreaming is to say, no, 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 we have a core value here. And our core value is perfect fill rates. One of our core values. I just made that up right now. I said to them, our, one of our core values is when someone orders us a product, we'll deliver it all the time. That's a core value. Okay. And I'm not saying that's a goal. We're not going to be, that's not a hard and fast. We're not going to be perfect. Nobody's perfect, but our, but our mission here is when you order, we're going to deliver. So we're going to target 100% fill rates. What would we have to do? This is the dream part. What would we have to do to get there? And then we changed our systems. We went through all of the the problems that this company had, and we changed our systems. We changed our routines. We changed our reward systems. We got really ground-level employees, the plant people that are showing up uh, by the hour at minimum wage to buy into this change of system. And... And we got to, I think it was 96% fill rates in less than a year, in about 11 months. And when we got to that level, all of a sudden we were making money. Our revenue went up 20% because simply because we're shipping order, we're shipping product. Uh, Customers started ordering more, ordering more because our scorecard went up with them. And 
that in effect was the turnaround. Obviously, there's a lot more than that, but we focus on fill rates and we went from the 32% to whatever the number was, 96%. Now, some people will, and some people did say to me, well, you didn't get 100%. That was a failure. Well, those people are fools because those people are hung up on the idea of goals and and meeting them with a pass-fail grade, okay? It's like you want to be healthier, and you say to yourself, well, I'm going to lose 20 pounds this year, and then you lose 18 pounds. Are you a failure? Are you a failure, or are you healthier because you lost 18 pounds, and should you be proud of that, okay? So it's the DARE approach which, which drives the creativity in management teams to push beyond... Uh, boundaries and this whole box that they're in on budgets and our negative variances. We made it, we didn't make it, you know, um, the stability associated with that. It gets them out of their comfort zone. Um, I wanted to do a short show today, so I'm not going to continue on with other examples. I will tell you that I wrote an article on LinkedIn about this uh, earlier this week. And we had a, uh, a comment back. I won't drop his name. If you want to go look at my comments on my LinkedIn channel, you can do that. Uh, but this fellow is a um, is uh, the president owner of uh, two companies. And his reply to my article was that smart goals are great, uh, are great at putting everything in a tidy a little box, squeezing out innovation. Your dare approach empowers people to dream big and realize their true potential. Achieving a fraction of the impossible opens the doors for way more opportunity. Thanks, Scott. I think that's well said. I'm not against SMART goals. SMART goals in a stable organization where you're looking for incremental change and you're looking for order, stability, and control, they're the way to go. If you're looking to level up, if you're looking to take a troubled business make it profitable, if you're looking for high growth, if you're looking to materially change your business or your life, try the DARE approach. Give it a shot. Dream, uh, adjust, reward, and evolve. Try it out. See if it works for you. Thank you for joining me on Instagram. Uh, I don't know if you enjoyed uh, watching into this recording session of the Martinis with Scott, but uh, thank you for joining and uh, on the Martinis with Scott channel on YouTube, please leave me some comments. How was the audio? Was it better? As I said, we're testing out this new system. I don't have a proper mic stand, so it looks kind of weird here, but uh, that's on order. It's on order from Amazon. Hope you all enjoyed it, and um, we'll talk to you next week.